cityscape is looming over me And I can't escape the reasons I'm not free When the smoke sinks in, sinks into my skin When the smoke sinks into my skin Maybe we should stop Maybe we should see Maybe we should Maybe we should stop Maybe we I'm should not homeless see. Maybe because the entire should. world is my home I don't look Keep at it as being homeless Keep a hold of things that make And so for 22 it months I've been living Keep a hold under bridge 32 on the canal one evening two young men came on the canal and they were making a lot of racket and as soon as I turned my back on them they attacked me and started beating me in the head and kicking me and trying to throw me over the banister into the water I had no means of protection. I had no arms. It was just one of me. As they were doing that, I was saying to myself, I am so glad these young men don't have any knives. And I'm just going to not fight back. Because not fighting back is fighting back. And so I crawled into my sleeping bag and I said to myself, here's further humiliation. Well, after that, it became very clear to me that I needed to be more resolute. Because look, if I'm going to get killed, I might as well get killed for something relevant. Well, it took several months for me to realize that what I was to do was to take the various parts of a 12-foot net that came to me in pieces and tape them together and actually reverse the litter that was in the canal. Reversal. So I'm collecting litter every single day. Every single day that I wake up, I pick up litter. Why is that? Because every single day, my fellow humans are littering. And they are so stressed out that they don't even understand that they're poisoning themselves. They don't even get it. Humans are so stressed out they're committing suicide. You know, everything is everything. That's a street saying, which means that the microcosm is in the macrocosm, and the macrocosm can be seen in the microcosm. Now, one of the reasons for this state of human beings is going back to the failure to follow the vegan genome the aboriginal diet of the human race. It is not a preference. In other words, let's just assume that a human being is a diesel engine. And instead of putting diesel fuel in the engine, we put gasoline in. Well, if you put gasoline in a diesel engine, it's going to mess up that diesel engine. If you take a human being and put them on the 
omnivore diet. Aren't you going to get something similar to what happened in Great Britain when they started feeding cattle sheep? No, 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 no. You are putting gasoline in a diesel engine. What's going to happen? Mad cow disease. Mad cow disease. Why? Because its brain is liquefied. Its brain has become liquid. So, we have not figured out that we are putting gasoline in a diesel engine? What is going on? Isn't science the process of, of knowing what's right from wrong, what's real from unreal, what's true from non-truth? A situation of fakery. Schizophrenia, bipolar, drug addiction, all of these things of mental aberration would go away if human beings were eating the proper diet. Cancers would go away if we were to address the lack of oxygen in the human body, if we were to control the lack of sanitation by allowing plastics and allowing water to be polluted with sewage and with petrochemical derivatives, we wouldn't be having a situation where 3% of the people are controlling 98% of all the resources and they are pointing the finger at the people who don't have anything and yet they got there from deceit from making slavery legal, from making drugs illegal, and then selling those drugs. Fakery. Criminality. There's no poor ducks. There's no poor swans. There's no poor Canadian geese. They're all rich. How come human beings are living in abject poverty and ducks are living in total luxury? What is that? The thing about human nature is that it generally likes to go the easy route. So in medical school in 1979, I was essentially shown the door and told to get out because I was too much of a radical. For 30 years, I didn't say very much about the issue of cancer. And then my mom came down with cancer of the breast and lost both her breasts. My mother died on my birthday in 2010. And I was reminded that I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I had to do something about the fact that my mother was not allowed to do a natural healing of her cancer. And so I started writing The Purple Seal, my newest book is entitled the Dr. Otto H. Warburg Spontaneous Cancer Treatise, and it's based on the suppressed work of the 1931 Nobel Prize winner who discovered the cause of cancer. My name is George Washington Singleton III, born in Charlotte, North Carolina on January 13, 1949. Nutritional herbology is what I specialize in and I'm just so thankful to be able to understand the root cause of sickness. It's a blessing which I ask to spread through this document.